Bye, man. Oh, well. Lord God, just thank you for this time to fellowship around your word, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, help me to be clear. Help me, Lord, to be holy. Lord, wash my sins in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that nothing will hinder from your word being exalted, Lord God. I thank you, please us. Lord God, may our hearts be prepared, Lord God, for today. And Lord, just pray for other visitors to come. Lord, and pray for others so we can grow in you, Lord. You know what my heart is. You know what our hearts are. We want to serve you without the world. Without the world. But right now, Lord God, let's settle down on the gospel of God. Settle down on Jesus Christ. And how man is a sinner in Jesus Christ. So, for Jesus' sake, I pray that these ears will hear, will hear, and their hearts will hear. Amen. All right. John, chapter 1. I was going to say first John. I don't know why I want to keep saying first John. <laughs> And how did we went to first John to study what I would say. Alright, so we're going through the Gospel of John. We've got real far, verse 5. And the light shines in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. And we've looked at that light. We've looked at that darkness. And that was another aspect of the message the other night. And the light and darkness that shows where we're at. And man could not and will not grasp eternity. That moment that any of us, the Bible says if a creature dies, be absent from this body. You may be looking at my body. There it is. It's dying. And to be present with the Lord, that moment when I go, there's no time frame that can be measured how quick. Next thing you know, you're going from the lights of a hospital room and you're going to the light of the Lord Jesus Christ that Paul said was above the human day sun. That's got to be remarkable, and you got to like shake your head and say, what's going on here? You ask me as a, as, a, as a preacher and teacher of the Bible, what's it going to be like when I get to heaven? I can't tell you. I know one thing probably, and like I said, this is something I preach. I can't name it by church. I have scriptures. We're going to be on our knees looking at a pair of feet. First. Humble me. And on the other hand, we've got family and friends and co-workers and people we see every day. They're going to pass from this life. They're going to be the same thing in the hospital bed or bed somewhere. They're going to pass from this life and they're going to enter into a place of darkness and in pain and extreme pain. And they're going to be thinking, okay, I've got to be relieved and there will be none. The moment that, hev that death and hell is cast off in lake of fire and they stand before God the great white throne of judgment. All right, that's relief. I think. I don't know. I don't know what their condition is they're going to stand before God. If they're going to be burnt. But then from that point on, if their name is not in the land's book of life, they are now cast off in lake of fire and burnt forever. And that's it. There is no relief. And something to think about, that great white throne of judgment, are they still tormented? But they will be when they get cast in the lake of fire. And there is a light in darkness. And God said, I am light. Jesus said, I am the light. There is no darkness in God. And we, to walk as Christians, we're going to walk in the light, not darkness. We don't walk in the twilight. We don't walk in greatness. Matthew 7.13. Matthew 7.13. And... It's remarkable that by the grace of God that when I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, I am going to wake up and turn be with the one that suffered and died. Amen. That I am not worthy. And then you add on to the additional benefits. He's going to give me a brand new body. I'm never going to sin. I'm going to have no pain, no sorrow. Well, isn't it enough that God just saved our soul? If God would say, okay, you're not going to hell, and okay, let's take for a moment, limbo, er, uh, purgatory, which you burn, they say, purgatory is not real. But if that moment say, okay, you're not going to hell, I'm just going to let you go to limbo somewhere, that'd be good enough. But there's no limbo, there's no purgatory, there's the fact is, when I die in Christ, and whoever dies in Christ, they're with the Lord. 
And the Bible reads about New Jerusalem, I believe we looked at it last time. God is the light. There's no need of sun or moon. If you walk out here, the sun can take you and burn. In Matthew 7, 13, Enter ye the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Okay, I'm going to tell you something right now. For all of us. And all of us, we have come to the point where we have witnessed to somebody somehow, some way. Alright? You opened up your mouth a couple weeks ago. Let's witness it. And let me get down for the very fact right now and get it on television. The fact is, on video and internet and all that, you're not going to get everybody saved according to the scripture. Because Jesus Christ says there's a broad way. That's the wide road. That's the entertainment road. That's where all the movies the end is. That's where all the women of the night are. That's where all the booze is. And he says that way is destruction. And Broadway is only lit up by artificial light. The nightlight. Let's go paint the town red. They never do it during the day. Well, today they do. Yeah. And that Broadway, many will follow that into destruction. Destruction. Destruction is a way that God describes hell. He said, the way that leads to destruction, John the Baptist says, is the wrath of God. Everything in hell is destroyed. Your entire life. Your, if you are a parent, your children don't want to have anything to do with you in hell. If you are a child, your parents don't want anything to do with you. They are in on their own agony. Mama's not going to kiss that boo-boo no more because she's got her own problems in hell. Your friends are not going to be your friends in hell. It's destruction. No Everything part. you had. You had a mansion. You had all the money. It's gone. When you die, you don't take it with you. I'm sorry. When you're in your birthday suit standing before God to take my throne, there's no place for your love. By the way, any money that you have, any possession you have, it's Genesis 1. God created it. He made that wood for your house. He made that rock to build the stone. In verse 14, but because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life, that's John chapter 5, life, and few there be that find. And I had a cop come up to me, well, you know, where's your big masses of people? Because the Bible said there will be no masses of people. Straight is that gate, narrow is the way, and Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Mark John 14, 6 with that verse. And you go say, listen, let me tell you something. You want to get out of hell, you want to go to heaven? Yeah. All right, Jesus Christ. With your heart, you must... You mean no dollies, no prayers, no giving, no charity, no this? No, that's not the way. And then people will walk away from you. Lost because... They want, the, they want the entertainment, they want the religion, they want anything but Jesus. And then realize as witnesses, as you're going to go out in the world as the Lord cares, not everybody's going to be saved. The few will, and a lot of times you're not even going to see those few get saved. Not everybody is going to heaven. That's another lie. So here we see... We are moving from 1 John 5, light and light and darkness, life and death. And it's put it down here in, in Matthew 7, 13. Darkness is first. And light is second. And darkness is first and light. Life equals life. And Jesus said both, that's him. And darkness and destruction is the way of the devil. John 3.36 Destruction That's not a good word. I mean, if you were to get somebody to say, okay, when it's all over with, my whole life, it, it's utter destruction, they won't say that. I've heard people say they've been buried with their cars in the cemetery. It ain't going with you. It's 
you got all the Egyptian pharaohs. They were buried in their tombs. They put everything that owned that pharaoh inside the tomb. Well, guess what? Museums are thanking the Egyptians because the pharaohs couldn't take it with them. How do you know that the religion of the Egyptians was wrong? Because the pharaoh is still dead and other people had this property. Now that pharaoh who was God king and king God, if he had any power, anybody who broke into his chamber, he killed, but he can't. And those chambers are dark because somebody opened up those doors. Now realize, if you go to John 3.36, a Christian cannot take his money, cannot take his gold, cannot take his car with him. But yet he does. You say, well, how do you do that? The Bible records every single dollar that you give to God. It's in God's a great record keeper. I'll tell you something else that God that you can take to heaven. Every time you're going out and witness, and anybody because of witness or anything you had to do with witnessing for someone to get saved, that goes to your account. And we'll get into that later. The judgment seat of Christ. If you had opportunity for someone to get saved, that's to your credit. So a lost man takes nothing. But a saved man that does what the Bible says, you're going to earn crowns or rewards. We'll get into that much later on. But John 3.36, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. Now we move the light, we're looking at light. Belief on the Son is everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son, those are capital S shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. And a lost man goes off into hell, and John the Baptist says, hell is the wrath of God. We just read Jesus said in Matthew 7, hell is destruction. And you say, well, we keep opening up these same verses over and over and over, and they all conclude to one point. And it's also repetition in the study. I mean, I, I go through reading my Bible and I, I, I've got several things going on. And I'm going through the book of Proverbs right now. I'll be making a note about this and reading along and making a note about that and read along. I got to go back to this and it's like that. You know, I got this thing over here and I got I'm back to that. And I got this and I got another thing. I'm back to that. And it's like, Lord, can you? Uh, the other day I just said, Lord, can you just put it in one big place? And I'm getting angry with the Lord making notes like, Lord, and then it comes to me, study to show thyself a proof unto God. And God's like, I want you to dig in there. Because I know if people, if I did make a list out of it, they still want it. So I'm going to make you study. So we see hell as destruction. We see hell as the wrath of God. Revelation 20. This Bible. That's all recorded in that. What's his name? I love this one. Revelation 20. And let's see what we got here. And it's all good. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan. You find that in Revelation 12 too. And bound him for a thousand years. Now that's the millennium. This is the end of the tribulation period. The seven years are over. An angel comes down and he puts the chains on Satan. He's locked up for a thousand years while the millennium's on. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. And set a seal upon him. Look, they put a seal upon him like they put a seal on Jesus' tomb. You're going to find Satan is the complete Antichrist counterpart of Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus has and does, Satan will do or has. They should uh, put a seal that should deceive the nations no more. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little seed. And I saw thrones that they that sat upon them, judging was given unto them. Imagine this way in the millennium, say, judge not least to be judged. 
Jesus Christ is sitting in Jerusalem on David's throne as king, given the authority to Christians and the apostles to judge. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark on their forehead or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. That's us. On the such, the second death has no power. That's not us. Now, the, the common saying is, if you're born twice, born again, you die once. Mm -hmm. If you die twice, I mean, if, you, if you're not born again, you die twice. Born once, die twice. There's a second death for the lost people. Not only did they die and go into hell, mm -hmm. wash air. And they shall be priests of God and Christ, and shall reign with Him a thousand years. Now, that's not the same. Lost people. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison at the end of the millennium. And shall go out and deceive the nation which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog, together. Uh, to gather them together to battle, and the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints, that's us, about in the beloved city, Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Now Mark chapter, Mark verse 10. Satan is cast into the lake of fire. Where the beast and false prophet are. They're already there. There's a point in the lake of fire that the beast and false prophet are the only people right now in that place. Now Satan is added to it. And shall be tormented. 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 That's what the... The rich man said in hell, tormented, day and night forever. He said there's no day and night in eternity. That's so we can know that, you know what, it's forever. I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away. Mother Earth is going bye-bye. When God shows up on that great white throne, this planet, this universe, I'm out of here. This wicked earth and universe soiled with NASA and Russian space rockets on Mars and, and all the Hubbles and stuff like that. And it's like, you know what? We're out of here. We're gone. Can you imagine that time when we see the earth and heaven, Mother Earth? Out of here. No more. Gone. Peter says with a great fervent heat. Uh fled away, and there was no place found them. You're not going to find this earth and these planets no more. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And one place in Matthew, Jesus says, By every idle word shall you give an account. There are books that God is keeping on people that they're going to be open one day at the great white throne judgment. And the works will be judged. A person today who's not saved, All right, yeah, okay, you gave to you and you gave here, you went to church, blah, 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 you helped old ladies across the street. All right, let's put it on the web. Let's put it in the skin. This side you, and this side Jesus Christ. Now, if you fall short, you're in trouble. Everything at this time is going to be measured. And there's one of the things that I preach is the fact is, if you say your religion, your science, whatever you are believing outside of Jesus Christ, you are saying that is better than what Jesus Christ is saying. I don't care what you say. And I'm not going to hear the knock religion, but you, whatever you are believing to get you in heaven or a utopia, whatever you believe, if it's not Jesus Christ, do you think that you think Jesus Christ sacrifice is insufficient? Because that's where God's going to weigh. He's going to weigh the works of the lost men upon what Jesus Christ has done. I was the most richest man in the world. Well, 
it wasn't for Jesus Christ the Creator, you would not ever have had. Matter of fact, it wasn't for Jesus Christ the Creator, you wouldn't even be standing here today. You see that nothing that evolution believes? Here it is. Right here in Revelation 20, I, I realize. The heavens and earth fled away. There's no place for them. That's a nothing. That's the nothing that scientists have been looking for. Hey, you imagine God saying, hey, look out there for a minute. What do you see? I don't see anything. There's your evolution. There's your Big Bang. It happened in the end. It didn't happen in the beginning. There's coming a time in the universe, there's nothing going to be there. And then here comes this great white throne. Isn't that going to be weird? And we're going to be on the other side of the great white throne. With Jesus, we're saved. There are no Christians here. Okay? We're judged, we'll get to that later in our notes. We're judged at the judgment seat of Christ. That's where Christians are. There's no Christian here. These are people before Calvary, from Genesis to Calvary. And there are people here from Calvary to the last man ever to be on this planet. In between those that got saved during the church age, they are not here. And every one of those persons, Adam, the books will be open. Seth, the books will be open. Enoch, the books will be open. Shem, the books will be open. Naaman, the books will be open. And Tom, Dix, and Harry. And James, and Linda's, and Phyllis's. And all names. And what man needs to know, okay, if I'm not going to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior, God says, I am making a book of you. We've got books in the Bible called Job, Nehemiah, Ezra. They're named for the people in those books. God has a name. David. Let's open the book of David. Whoa, whoa, whoa. David was born on this day, on this time, at this hospital, of these parents. And from that point on, everything is recorded if you have not received Christ as your Savior. Now, God recorded a book for me. September 6, 1968, I was blah, 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 blah. All right? April 21st, 1987, I reached down on my knees and called out upon Jesus Christ to save my soul, to wash me of all my sins. And from that day, from April 21st back to September 6, 1968, God took the blood and washed me. And so when Satan comes up, what did you do with that sin when you're 14 years old? It's not in the books no more. The books. And even as Christians, there's a book called Tracy. There's a book called Louise. There's a book called Roberto. And God's writing down. They're having a Bible study right now. Uh, I saw what your eyes were looking at. I heard what you were listening to. I smelled what you were smelling. I saw what you touched. I see where those feet go, and I'm recording that down. God is a marvelous bookkeeper. Read the book of Numbers and Chronicles to realize. And yet, today, for me, after April 21st, 1987, God writes down, okay, that's sin. How many red lights did that guy get? Little marks, little marks, little marks. And he writes that down. At such and such intersection, that guy got angry at that red light again. And they're there. I said, Lord God, you know, I'm so sorry about my patience. Lord, what is affecting me in our fellowship with you and me? These red lights. This lack of patience you have in your life. Lord, Lord God, 1 John 1 9 says, If I confess my sins and seriously confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me. Hand me the blood. Alright, all those red lights are canceled out when we go to the judgment seat of Christ. Now, there are sins that I have not confessed, and there are sins where I confess, but I really didn't mean to confess it, but, you know, I was caught. But here are people that are lost, and there is no blood atonement. And from the very first time they lied to mom, from the very first time they stole the cookie, or shoplifted, or had a false witness, or let their brother take the, the, the blame instead of them doing it, that is all being reported down. Aren't you glad the eternity stops? I uh, mean, begins before this great white throne judgment. Because all the world's going to be judged. There is no time here in the great white throne judgment. And that's another early verse which you know, can't write it down. So, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open, and another book was open. 
a secondary book. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their work. There are people say, oh, I'm saved by my works. Okay, you'll be judged by them. If you're believing in salvation by works, that twilling beads, selling magazines, writing your bicycle, uh, making textbooks, whatever, you're, whatever it is, they're going to be waiting. They're going to be waiting against Jesus. Jesus is the sword. Jesus is that which will say. And we're going to be standing there, watching all this. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in them. Every, everybody from the Titanic is coming up. And death and hell delivered the dead that were, which were in them. Hell and death is the graveyard are going to spit out bodies. Hell is going to spit out the souls. Like Jonah in the whale. This earth is likened to a whale. Jonah was in the whale and died and went to hell. So what is the number one animal that man wants to save today besides the soul? He wants to save the whale. Mother Earth. According to their work. Death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. So when a man goes to hell, he's coming out, the scriptures say. Wouldn't that be a relief? Wouldn't it be like wiping this from, oh, okay, now see, that's purgatory. All right. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. Name in the Syrian, in the Old Testament. All right, step up, name you got leprosy, you, you did this, that, that, that. Well, according to the records, why should I let you into heaven? Now, he cannot say the blood of Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ wasn't even born yet. He says, well, you know what? That prophet told me, if I go wash seven times in the Jordan, and I came back and I said, listen, I want to worship God the Father for all eternity. I want to do right. And I have to... Listen to my master, if I can have the dirt of Jewish soil, that when I kneel down in this house of this foreign God, I will kneel down to the God of, of, of the Hebrews. Okay, come. But he's not going to get the new Jerusalem. He's a Gentile. He's not going to get the new earth, because that belongs to Abraham and the sea. He's going to get the new heavens. There's three classifications of new things coming. New heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is for Christians that are washed in the blood. The new earth that belongs to Abraham and seed, the land grant. I will give you this land. And the new heavens, the Gentile. You can get uh, Jezebel to step up to that. To the, to God, the books will be open. Well, why should I let you into my... I had 450 prophets that I fed at my table. I wanted to kill your prophets. But what'd you do for me? All right, lady, get out of here. Jump in the lake. And the thing is, it says, every man's going to be judged according to their works. A man in the church age steps up to the guy and says, well, I was a member of the Baptist church, and I took care of that church, and I fixed the roofs of that church, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's weigh you against you. The way, the truth, and life, which you have heard. I never heard that, Lord. I never heard that. Would the Hayward family step up, please? Come on. I think that, uh, this is what I think. Step up over here. Do you recognize this guy? No. Who is he? Oh, he's a watermelon dealer at, at that place used to be Daytona Beach Farmer's Market. He says he's never heard the gospel. My father, you know, we went there every Saturday morning, and everybody was there at the time we were there. And I don't know if God's going to play it back in my big mouth preaching the gospel right in front of that guy. And that guy will stand up and say, no, you can't say you never knew. I sent the family there to, to, for you to hear. Now you get somebody else, Joe Soap steps up, and you know, blah, 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 blah. And he says, Lord, I, I, I never heard the gospel. And he calls up a Christian. He says, you had dealings with this guy. This guy sold you a cup of coffee at a convenience store. I told you to give him a gospel check. Did you? No. What are you going to do? 
you just took part of a man that did not hear the gospel. That's why we got to tell them. If we tell them, and they say, God, at the great white throne judgment, I never heard. I, now, this is your throwing the garbage can. I think he's going to call us up and say, okay, come here. And somehow he's going to play back that day. That, hey, you know what? They gave you a You know, you are going to the lake of fire for all eternity. Let me show you your mother on her knees and tears over you, boy. Let me show you that. You went to hell over that mother. This is going to happen here. And to realize our tears are not wiped away to 21. We're going to be at this great white throne judgment as Christians in tears because we did not obey God and go and tell everybody about Jesus. Or we didn't do enough. And we're going to watch our family and friends and co-workers. We're going to see people get cast off. And death in hell was cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. A lost man dies twice. What is the second death? Go into the lake of fire. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. So, another misconception. Everybody in the Great White Throne Judgment is going into the lake of fire. That's not true. Eric comes up to the God. Well, God, check the book. See if my name's there. All right, check the book. His name is there? Okay. He may have been in the Old Testament. Uh, the, get the, name, the one that came to Solomon to prove him with all the questions. Queen of Sheba. I, I, was a title, I thought. The Queen of Sheba, I think her name is going to be in that book. I believe Nebuchadnezzar's name is in that book. Now, they're not in the church age. They can't be saved by the blood, but they obeyed God. Cyrus will be in that book. Cyrus, everything written about him, all the defeats, all the wars, all the things, but he obeyed God and allowed those Jews to go back and build that temple. And, all right, oh, Cyrus, your name's in there? Now, they don't get New Jerusalem. And they're going to be saved Jews in that book, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Naaman won't be in that book. Uh, Cain won't be, his name won't be in that book. So here's the point for people who are in darkness, or are in hell today. They're coming out. And they will be judged by God, which is Jesus Christ on the throne. And God's going to let them say whatever you want to say. Claim whatever you want to claim. Name it, claim it, do whatever you want to do. All right, let's put it in the book and see if your name is there. Weighing against Jesus Christ. And if your name's in the book, you go into a good eternity. If it's not, your final destination is you are in that lake of fire and there's no ever coming out and there is Satan. There is Satan and the false prophet, the beast, the Antichrist. Now, let's look at verse 10 real quick. Here's a secondary kind of exit. Uh, chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived him was cast into the lake of fire. And then you got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, the great white zone judgment. Satan never stands at the great white zone judgment. He goes in the lake of fire before that. So when people say Satan's going to bow down and proclaim that Jesus is Lord, I don't think so. According to that great white zone judgment shows up actively. I've got other stories like that, but that's what that looks like. So when a man is in hell, that's not it. Hell, speak hell fire. That's not a lake of fire. You know the expression goes jump in the lake. Imagine God telling a lost man, okay, go jump in that lake. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. How does God know you? Is your name in the book. So the fact is, I, one of the things I use as an illustration when I preach it, a reservation book like you do for a hotel. Today, there's only one name, one way to get your name in that man's book of life, and that is by the blood of Jesus Christ, who says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So, 
I can't grasp heaven and I can't grasp hell. But we're going to see this one day as Christians. Mark 16, 15. So now that we know where a man is going and the state of man by the following weeks that we've been teaching, and you know, the Bible says, Mark 16, 15, that a husband and father is supposed to answer his family's question. The Bible says to the fact, not quote, play that. The wife that has the question, she can ask her husband at home. The Bible teaches over and over again that a father is supposed to teach his children God. And the fact is that when you are brought up in such a house where the father takes the charge responsibly and faithfully to what God has, has told him to do, those children are under the worst. Thought because you know what? They've been brought up to know what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it. And woe to them if they don't. And what we're learning now is for the four of us, even as Christians going to heaven one day, we can now never say, God, well, God, I never knew. Well, you, you're the one that talked the lesson, idiot. <laughs> well, you're the one that heard the cassette tape. You're the one that heard it on the radio. You realize once we hear God's word preached faithfully, we are responsible for what he taught us. There's no more excuse. So why don't people go to church? Because they don't want to hear something that God's going to say, okay, now you're responsible. You know, day of reckoning. I gave you five quarters and five dimes. Okay, now... Where's the money? Well, I got five quarters and four dimes. Well, where's the other dime? It's what I gave you. And what God's given us the word. Now we've got to act on it. Now, like I said, with that, we're moving on to Mark 16, verse 15. This is Jesus. He said unto them, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Why? What have we been reading about darkness and hell? How many of them are going to go buy a Bible outright and know where to find the verses and how to get saved? Even I got to use a concordance. And I know what subject I'm talking about. Now, there are people out there who will go get a Bible and God will open up that I believe God does that. But for a lost man who has no idea of what God, and has no idea of anything but God, what God is and who God is, with a realm of religions all around us, that you can find a God, a dime, a dozen, plus uh, chicken and handle and that. Just in Daytona a Beach alone with all the churches and religions here. And God says, go out there and, and preach the gospel. Well, I had a bunch of people come knocking on my door and, and try to give me a magazine. That's not the gospel. That's not the same Jesus. Well, I went to the church and we had, you know, fellowships and they had hamburgers and hot dogs and they didn't have an a evening service afterwards. No, we don't go down out there and preach politics. We don't go out there, oh, you know, your flower bed's nice and all that. We go out there to gospel. Then we can talk about flower beds and stuff like that later. That person you're dealing with, they got to know you're going to get the gospel back and you have the ability to talk to the gospel is Jesus Christ suffered and died and buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures for you. Now what are going to do? That's the main thing. And to have God at the great white throne judgment and have that man say, well, I never knew and call you back up as well. Yeah, oh man, we talked about the Boston Red Sox. We never got around to the gospel. Oh! Why was that? And I hear people out there, and I've been in uh, classes where, you know, you, you, you look at their, oh, they like roses, so you talk about roses and stuff like that. That's how you break the conversation. And then what? They, they got to leave in five minutes, and you never dig into the gospel out there, but you got a whole lesson on roses. 
You know, Satan would be, okay, when you're ready, okay, here I go. Here comes the gospel. The phone rings. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go pick up. The wife comes over. Come on, let's go. What it is. And that happens at the flea at the flea market all the time. Oh yeah. You gotta get that gospel in there before Satan comes in and plucks away that seed. Now, if you've never planted the seed, right? It's like when I have uh, the Bible tries to keep us back. Yes. And and, and that's the thing. Start. People, even Christians today, oh, it's everything but the gospel. No, it's all about the gospel. And if they're going to walk away from you because you are a Yankee fan and they're a Red, oh, care. But if you lay out the gospel that you're there for Jesus Christ and for the saving of their souls and believe on Jesus and they walk away from that, rather be for Jesus than some stupid nonsense that ain't going to mean nothing in eternity. you got to stretch your point. If you go knocking on the door, you deal with it. you got to stretch your point right there. When I start the preaching, I start off with John 3.16. I have started that for two to three years. I have got people there. When I step up and I'm starting to set up, they will quote to me back John 3.16. Yeah, they're I have put they're it lost in their heart. and they yell it back to us. As, as, we're, as we're setting up, they say John 3.16. It's in their heart. So let's, let, let's, give, that, let's give that guy a, a name. Let's give that guy a name, Todd. Say his name, I don't know. Todd stands for the great white film judge. Well, I never knew. And, you know, I, I believe God's sarcastic. You read the Bible. So, what was that verse you hear? For God so loved us. Oh, you do know. You do know. I don't have to call that family up. That guy opened up every single message with the same verse. And then John 3.36. I don't go up there and say, hi, everybody, I hope your products are doing good, everything, oh, you know, you got great dresses and great watermelon, no, go up there, God so loved the world. I mean, you go, you go knock, if you knock on the door, you go, how you doing, my name is Valerie, this is what you work I don't mention church. No, we don't, I'm saying, if that's what you do, we're here for the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I'm in the public ministry, I never mention church. <laughs> And if we get going here, don't ever mention the church where you're sewing. That's later. Because then they're going to think, well, if I go to church, I'm okay. No. Let's get down with Jesus. And if you're not going to trust Jesus, I don't want you in my church. Church is for saved people. You know, Sunday morning sermons are so filled with get saved, get saved, get saved, get saved, get saved. And the, and the sheep are like, they're, they're thin in bones because they're not getting no sheep chow. They keep getting wolf chow. They're getting goat chow. They gotta grow. This is going all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know, I failed that. I have a problem sizing people up. My daughter don't. She can walk right give anybody a gospel And there'll be people with a great white throne judgment. Because I didn't do what God told me to do. And we need to come to realize if we're so great Christians. And we're so wonderful, we're so, look how great, how many people are not in church and all that. How many people are now dead in hell because you will not do nothing? I'm not talking about the ones in hell because you witnessed and they reject. How about the ones where God told you, go to that person and you did it? You might have been the person that person would trust in Christ. You don't know. Now, as far as I know, when my uncle died. My last uncle that died. I was thinking back, and as far as I know, I believe everybody in my family is uh, But my uncle, I, I, I cannot know if I witnessed him. And that bothers me. It's a long time. And we cannot have, have that happen with death. Because after death happens, when we can't do nothing. And they're, they're going to be offended of us. They're going to hate us. Well, Jesus said, Marvel not, the world hates you. You told them. And Paul says, I planted Apollo's water. You may be planting the seed for later to be watered, or you may be watering that seed at that moment for God to do the future. Now Romans chapter 10, verse 14. And think about the glory if they do get saved. They're going to the same place you're going. You'll have eternal fellowship. 
you, can you imagine? Can you imagine someone going? You're going to heaven. There's someone you witness to, and you guys are kicking about, laughing about. You know, I gotta say I'm sorry about how, how I treated you, how I made fun of you, and that. But man, it's great that I'm in. Romans 10:14. And this is after the gospel invitation by the heart. Verses 9 to 13. In Romans 10, 14. Now this is our commission. You can never have the attitude, oh, I'm saved, that's good. On April 21st, 1987, I got saved. On April 22nd, I went to Sunday church in there and stood up before the congregation and said, I received Christ as my Savior. I'm told I'm supposed to be baptized and they're going to do that next week. That's what comes next. I went home that afternoon and went right to my dad and told him. That. Now he bowed because he thought I told him to go to hell. My mouth was already open the next day I got saved. And it hasn't been shut yet. And there are people come up to me with stupid things. They think they're going to shut me up. Yeah. No. It's a witness. And Romans chapter 10 verse 14 we see. How then shall they call on him, Jesus, in whom they have not believed? Unsaved. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Now Jesus said go in all the world and preach the gospel. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Mark 16. As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings and good things. Now the gospel means good news. There's glad tidings and good things. So match with Mark 16, 15, with Romans 10, 14 to 21. That's our calling. And there is no way they're going to be saved except we preach and an angel is not going to do it. In Acts chapter 10, the angel came to Cornelius and said, you guys will get Peter. Now we need to learn that God sends men and women. Christians are commanded to go. But by what we've learned today in Matthew 7, 13, not all will listen. We also learn by Matthew 7, 13 that not all will get saved. And we bring the light into a dark world. In John chapter 3. John chapter 3. John 3, 17. today in this. John 3.16 The invitation for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. First Advent. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Romans 10. But he but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. They won't get saved because they won't listen because they don't want to hear what they're doing wrong. For he that doeth the truth cometh to the light and his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. When we go out and preach the gospel, when they need a preacher to preach to them, we are sending the light out to them. We are manifesting to them who they are. They are sinners. They are wicked. They do not stand right in God. They are not loved by God if they rejected Jesus Christ. And that blinding light will force them to, oh man, turn it off. 
And it may not be that time. It may not be that time. It may be another time. But we are, we see men going to a place called hell. We see them coming out of hell, going to stand before God in judgment. And if they are found condemned, they will be cast off in a lake of fire for all eternity. That is their final destination, and there is no end to the damnation, to the wrath of God, to the pain and suffering. And we are told by God the only way for them to be saved is not only by Jesus Christ, but by we bring them the gospel. And again, we've learned by Matthew 7, 13, not everybody's going to get saved. Rest that sure right now. Once you witness, they're not all going to get saved. But they all hurt. Few will get saved. But we are bringing that light into a darkened world. That's what God wants us to do. We can't make them get saved. That don't work. And when we realize that people, if we don't even know where they're going, where the condemnation lies, maybe get us our hearts going to go even more or step out and to do what we haven't done already. And before we get too prideful in who we are and what we are, we need to realize that uh, at least, well, let me speak for myself. There are people right now who are going to stand before God. They're going to go to the great white stone judgment. They're going to go off and lake of fire because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And when you get into study with, with Ezekiel, where the blood upon their, the blood will be upon your fingers for not knowing them as a watcher. And when we realize one person was going off the lake of fire because we didn't do what we were supposed to, that should make us the next time say, I don't care what, what my flesh said. I'm going to do I'm going to tell them. But then again, we tell God no. All have sinned come short of the glory of God. So, two things about our life when it comes to witnesses. Number one, they're not all going to get saved. And number two, few will get saved. And number three, we're going to stand not at the Great White Soul Judgment. We're going to be there and we're going to see people that we should have told. We did. And we're going to see people that we did tell and we may be called up as a witness to that night. Oh, we may not even know who they are. Yeah. Right, so, so, well, what do you mean by yeah, that? Oh, Lord, I, I never, I never.